please grab your constitution. If you don't know what that is, that's your Bible. Turn on your iPad, turn on your iPhone, or whatever tablet, and turn with me to the book of Genesis. That's the beginning of the book. And start, and turn with me to chapter 39. Hey, Lord. Mm. I know this probably won't be my last time actually preaching from this pulpit. But God has been good to us at this church, fellas. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. And uh, thank God. God has been good to go on off of Christ Church. Ha. <sighs> Isaiah 41, 20 says that the people may know and see and understand. Know, see, and understand that the hand of the Lord has established or done this miracle. When I think about this scripture, I'm not just talking about the campus that we're getting ready to possess and occupy. But the hand of the Lord has established, Lawanya, this miracle. That's you. Do you believe that you're a miracle? <laughs> Have anybody ever been on death door? Have you been rolled off by your family and counted out, counted out by society and they told you it was a nobody, you weren't going to be nothing? You sorry like your mama, sorry like your daddy. And, uh, is that just uh, that the people may know and understand, that means perceive that the hand of the Lord the hand of the Lord, that's the right hand. You never want to be on the left side, baby. You always want to stay on the right. The hand of the Lord has done this miracle. Look at your neighbor and say, you're looking at a miracle. Oh, some of y'all may not. Uh, some of you are you, oh, are you students. I ain't trying, but when you're just being, just being able to come back to school, my God, after the spring break, my God, you're looking at a miracle. Uh, yes, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Many of them don't get a chance to come back. I remember when Sparkle was down there in Langston. Uh, when me and Pastor Champ went down there in Langston, and she said, Daddy, a lot of my friends, uh, uh, whatever break that was, they didn't come back. Uh, and you said, why? Because uh, they couldn't afford it. <laughs> but if you're still in school, you ought to give God some glory. <laughs> Somebody give God some glory because he's been so good to you. Genesis 39, starting at verse number 19. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads from the New Living Translation. Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. Somebody looked at David and said, the Lord was with me. Even in prison, now we understand that this is a physical prison, but whatever crisis, whatever situation that you may be facing, the Lord is with you. And look what the word of God says. That's why it's so good to read the Constitution, Christian, because it says, and, and, and the Lord was with Joseph in prison and showed him his faithful love. My God. Oh, I know that to be personal. Some of you may think that I have never experienced God's love. Yeah, you have. <laughs> you got breath in your body, and if you walked in it on your own two feet, that's enough. For... Well, I, I... If you got a car to drive home in, you got food. I don't care if you ain't got nothing but some bologna and hot, and hot dogs like we used to have. You better give God some glory. I'm talking about sugar sandwiches. <laughs> Peanut butter and jam. I, I ate pop dirty dads. We ate popcorn for seven days. Oh, I'm talking about my family ate popcorn for seven days at one time. That's all we can afford. Oh my God, but oh my God. Bring out the ribeye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Write it off, baby. Don't get me started up in here. Come on. See, a lot of us forget how good God been to you. Uh, you better come on. Oh, don't pay me no man. <laughs> I'm not a polished pastor. I'm not a polished preacher. Uh, I'll just give God the glory for what he done done for me. Mm, but he's been faithful, Sharon. <laughs> oh, my God. I said he's been faithful, my God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite, my God, with the prison warden. 
Verse 22 says, Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. Verse 23 says, Then the warden had no more worries, y'all, because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Lord, bless this time. Let your personality and let your kingdom manifest. Whatever you do, Father God, save somebody's soul. Restore and reclaim anybody that may be away from you. Break the spirit of discouragement. Speak in the midst of the crisis and circumstances because the law is with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mm. I'm going to attempt. I probably won't get finished, but that's okay. Uh, but God dropped this in my spirit, and he just gave me an extra week to, 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 to critique and work on. But I believe God got a word to encourage the body uh, of Christ this afternoon. So I want to move forward. First of all, I want to say... Uh, God bless every last one of you. Uh, in the Jewish culture, when they spoke blessings over the people, they didn't take that lightly. We so haphazardly to say, God bless you and I love you, but uh, them words in the Jewish culture, minister Christian, has great significance. When you speak and pronounce a blessing over somebody's life, never take that for granted when somebody greets you and they greet you with a sincere blessing and say, God bless you. Them is not just words, man. They speaking things into your life, church. My God. Mm. How do you know? Y'all listen to me as y'all get settled. When y'all get settled, I get settled. Amen. How do you know if you're on a detour from God or a detour because of your own decision? As we move toward the future that God has planned for us, we experience stops, church, along the way called detours. When detours occur, we feel compelled to ask questions like, write these down. Why is God punishing me? Or, what did I do to deserve this? If you don't believe me, ask Moses, because that's what he said. What did I do to deserve this? If this is the way it's going to be like, you might well kill me now. That's what Moses, the great deliverer, he said, this is too much of a burden to deal with all these people. God allowed us, church, to, God allows us to go through, I'm going to go on detours, and they are always, remember this, with a purpose. Amen. And one of the purposes is for preparation to mature you and I, and at times, even to correct you and I. Don't you know that part of God's will has to do with a lot of 99%, I'm going to say 99% of correction? We don't want to be corrected, but it's a way of life. Blessed is the man that suffer persecution for righteousness sake. But then God also says, my God, uh, blessed is the person that re that's able to receive correction. It will prosper their soul. But to reject Correction, you condemn, you bring condemnation on yourself. Ooh, ouch. Ouch. It benefits you when you receive correction, especially when somebody's correcting you in love and they're telling you the truth. It do you, it do you and I well to receive it, even if we don't care about the person that's giving it to us. And so God prepares us through detours and and he matures us and, and corrects us. Uh -huh. And while these moments might look like setback to us, church, I'm taking my time for a reason. Mm. Setbacks to us, to God, they are simply part of the process to our destiny. Somebody look at your name and say process. process. So how do we know, my God, if we're experiencing, my God, ooh, a God-sent interruption or a self-inflicted distraction? As a pastor, I didn't see many of them get picked off. Not because of the devil, but because of flesh. There are four ways. I might only get through with two, but praise be to God. To show you if you're on the right path. So the title of this sermon is, is either God sent or God used. God sent or God used. And in relation to the story, I know 
week before last, I've been talking about Joseph, who I can identify with, a prototype of Christ in the New Testament. But I thank God because this was God sent, what Joseph went through, but also God used at the same time. Uh, God sent him through this, and he also used it <laughs> to prepare, prepare him. My God. So how do you know? How do you know, my God, if it's God sent? Point number one, you are being persecuted for righteousness' sake. Joseph went to prison not because he did something wrong. Let me give you some context. Not because he did something wrong. Have anybody been persecuted and you was right, but they treated you like you was wrong? Let me see your hand. Is that anybody? Okay. Have anybody ever been lied on when you, they said you said it, but you really didn't say it? Uh, have somebody used your name, my God, the wrong way? And they, uh, I hope. So have somebody misunderstood you? Uh, have somebody said, I know you, but then when you do, they act like they never said they knew you? All right. Mm. Joseph didn't do nothing wrong, but because he stood up for what was right. Let me give you some context and some principles. He never slept is the reason why he's in prison, because he never slept with Potiphar's wife or welcomed her advances. When the situation with Potiphar's wife became too much to bear, he fled from temptation. Write that down. Potiphar's wife, my God, while he was in there working, Joseph, was taking and taking care of God's business. The Bible says that Joseph was handsome. He was attractive. And so, therefore, uh, Potiphar was out of town uh, taking care of kingdom business, and his wife was at home alone. Lord, have mercy. Mm. And here Joseph is, handsome, young, probably like Pastor Peoples, and, and this woman, somebody say this other woman, began to look at him lustfully. But because Joseph had principles, the Bible says that he fled the temptation. Even though she kept pursuing, even that snake kept hissing. Did y'all catch that? Even that snake kept hissing. Uh, but because of the conviction, because of the reverence, and because of the honor of doing business in the king's palace. Boy, I'm giving y'all kingdom, not church. Even this man's wife. Who Joseph in the flesh could have said, oh, I'm finna, the king's wife, oh, I'm finna go to another level. But the Bible said that he fled the temptation. That is critical because the word of God says, I'm trying to teach y'all. I got to watch my verbiage because my baby's in here. But the Bible says, shun the very appearance of evil. I promise you if, you, if you write this down to my men, women, and everything in between. Oh, my God, when it's temptation to get that strong, and when you know you can't cross that line. Oh, my God, I preached that in 2013. Don't cross the line. My God, if you know you're about to cross the line, why don't you do a about face and turn and run? <laughs> Why do you, why do you got to get all the way up to the line and keep playing with the enemy? When, but, but you a quote, my God, you a quote when, when you overheard, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When we this far away from the line, when we this far, watch this, when we this far away from the temptation, we a quote, my God, the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. Oh, my God, but when we get this close, my God, up on the, the temptation, all of a sudden we don't quote the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. Oh, my God, if you know you're dealing with something, my God, why don't you turn, run, and flee? Oh, my God, Apostle Paul told his young son, Timothy, he said, my God, shun the very appearance of evil. You know if it's right or wrong. You know if it's temp tempting you to do something you shouldn't do. Run. Don't walk. Don't play with it. Run. Oh, my God. Many of you are trying to quit doing drugs and alcohol. And every time you come over, somebody pull up and say, I got something for you. Uh, instead of you talking about, no, don't cross this line. You need to find a, you, you invite them in. Some of us open up the door and let the enemy cross the threshold of our home. Uh, you talking about cast out the enemy, but you let the enemy come in. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And you wonder why you can't live saved for th 30 seconds. Shun, that's a principle to help you and I, shun the very appearance of evil. If you keep jabbing at you and message you on Facebook, then won't you take to get off of Facebook? If you're trying to get away from them, my God, that's how you keep getting to you, then close down your Facebook. How bad do you want to be free? I'm sorry. Let me, let me be polished this Sunday. Mm. Let me tell you this right here. One of the signs that you know that it's God's sin is you're being persecuted for righteousness' sake. So, my God, if you never experience negative repercussions because of your Christian faith, you probably aren't a Christian or at least not a very good one. If nobody's never persecuting you and talk about you and lying on you because of your prof key word, profession, profession of a Christian, uh, some of us don't want to profess that we're Christian because we know we ain't living. 
That's okay. I'm not going to condemn nobody. That's not my place. Uh, but if you never experience no type of pressure, persecution, if people don't want to leave your life because they say you think you all that now and uh, you don't you you act different now and you always praying you always talking about God bless you and and, and you mean to tell me that I gotta forgive her yeah you gotta forgive her you mean to tell me that I gotta forgive him yeah you got yeah and, and girl you got the loss see if you ain't feeling feeling and experience any type of persecution y'all better stay with me because many of us I hate to say it y'all know I love the body of Christ but many people sitting here right now don't never feel no persecution behind your profession as a man or woman of God. And you ain't got to be boastful My God, your lifestyle alone will bring conviction How you conduct your affairs and your business Joseph, my God, was in the kingdom In the palace, my God Conducting the king's affairs He wasn't bothering nobody Even though the king was out taking care of kingdom business My God, Joseph was back home My God, tending to the king's business He wasn't bothering nobody But now he found himself in prison My God, because of his convictions he found himself being persecuted because of his convictions. He found himself, my God, going through another trial. He was sold in a pit, and now he found himself in prison, not because of something he did, but because God sent it. Oh, my God. What do you do when God sends you to the pit? What do you do when God puts you in prison? I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, but if you fail to realize that God got you in prison, my God, because he's trying to mature you. He's trying to develop. He's trying to purge you. He's trying to correct you. See what I say to get you ready for your destiny. I'm going to work, I promise you. But again, if you're never experiencing, Brandon, any type of persecution behind your profession, key word profession, because many people profess Christ, but their life don't match Christ. That don't mean we're not going to stumble, don't mean we're not going to fall, my God. But sooner or later, if you've been professing Christ for over three years, then you ought to look like Christ in some kind of capacity, church. I'm sorry, many people won't talk about it, but it's the truth. Lifestyle still matters. Holiness still matters. When did holiness go out the way? When did living right go out the way? The devil is alive. I know it's not popular to Christians, but it's popular to going over Christ church. My God, you got to live something, my God. Lifestyle matters. Look at your neighbor and say, lifestyle matters. It was good for me that I was afflicted. It's good to be afflicted when you're being persecuted because you're standing for righteousness. Oh, my God. Let's look at Daniel. Daniel was sent to the lions then for, for, for continuing to pray. Oh, my God. I don't want to go in the story because I don't want to get stuck. My God, I get going. But he was, he was suffering, Daniel. Ah, another young warrior like Joseph, my God, was suffering, my God. Oh, my God, because he refused to bow down and worship Darius, the, 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 the statue and all that. So that's in Daniel chapter 6. Mm. 616, my God. Daniel was thrown in the lines then because he refused, my God, to give his loyalty. Oh, stay with me, my God. Daniel refused. Ooh, Pastor Champ. Daniel refused to show his allegiance. Kingdom, kingdom, his allegiance to anything but God. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 633, so let's seek first the kingdom. Oh, your allegiance, your loyalty, my God, your first priority is to the king, my God. And Daniel said, my God, if you kill me, uh, Joel said, though you slay me, yet will I still trust in you. Daniel refused to bow down and worship anything, my God, that wasn't the true and living God. Can I help you this afternoon? <laughs> anything that you are worship more than God is your God, baby. Oh, my God, are you bound down to idols? <laughs> oh, thou shalt have no other idol before me. <laughs> oh, my God, sex can be an idol. <laughs> too much Facebook can be an idol. Come on, somebody. Too much eating can be an idol. I ain't gonna mess with you, my God. Oh, my God, too much of anything can be an idol, my God. <laughs> oh, my God, anything that you give your allegiance to, my God, more than a God is an idol. Can I help you? And I'm gonna help my students. Too much schoolwork is studying the Bible. The books, but never studying the Bible could be an idol. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh my God, too much of anything my God can be an idol. But Daniel purposed in his heart not to bow down and worship nothing but the true and living God. Oh, it takes that type of conviction, Christian, at this day and hour. Oh my God, you got to have firm conviction if you're going to stand. Oh my God, and be persecuted for righteousness. Say, when you stand for God, my God, welcome to hell. When you stand to God, we stand for God, welcome to persecution. When you stand for God, my God, in strong convictions, my God, welcome to people walking out your life. Welcome to people misunderstand you. People need an excuse to leave a life my God that's standing for Christ. Oh my God you ain't got to do nothing. They'll find a reason to leave you because they don't want to live right. They don't want to walk right my God. But Daniel uh, I said the devil is alive. I'm standing for Christ my God. And so if you got to throw me in the lines then throw me in the lines then because it ain't no shadow of turning. I'm standing on these convictions my God. You got to understand my God you will be persecuted Ken Ken when you stand for righteousness sake. So if you're putting stuff on Facebook scriptures, guess what? The same people that you're, that's reading your post and the same people that, my God, you friend with is going to be looking to see if your life matches what you just posted. You're quoting all these scriptures, but then when they get around, you don't see nothing. That's called being a stumbling block. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, my God, in Matthew 10, 22, Jesus promised that you will be hated. 
Ah, that's a strong text. I mean, verb is hated by all because of my name. Hate it. People will dislike you. People will literally hate you and want to see you dead. Uh, it ain't going to get better. It's going to get worse. Sir. That's why the great T.D. Jake said, don't get bitter, get better. Uh, but Jesus warns you and I, Pastor Madeline, my God, he said these things is going to happen. So when they happen, why are you tripping out? Why are you so bitter at people, my God, because they hate you because of your, co- your conviction and your confession when God tells you these things are going to happen? That's why it's so important to read the word and know the word. Don't just read the word. Read the word. Don't just read the word. Read the word. And so therefore, Jesus just let you and I know, my God, that you're going to be hated, woman of God. Dislike, people going to leave your life, even your family members. He says your worstest enemy are those of your own household. My God. Oh, you're going to be hated because you stand for Christ. Why me? What did I do to deserve this? Oh, my God. So if he's suffering because of your profession as a man or woman of God, that's a good thing. That means you and I are getting a little bit closer. We're getting a little bit more dusty. <laughs> We're coming a little bit more like Christ. Come on, somebody. Oh, my Matthew 24, 9 also says, my God. Oh, that was 10, Matthew 10, 22. But Matthew 24, 9 says, then you will be arrested. Uh-oh. See, some of y'all are scared to go that way. Uh, I'm not going to let no pride get in the way, Lawanya, but I am too. I don't want to go back. I've been nuts. I spent all my 20s in the pen. I'm scared to go back to the penitentiary. And I pray I don't have to go back that way again. I don't even want to go back for, 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 for righteousness sake. I don't want to go back. I'm going to keep it on a dollar. Boy, but once I put my mind, it's game time. I'm being serious. I'm trying to help y'all. Because this scripture might not make sense to you and I in America. But you go to the places they're being thrown in prison behind their profession. As Christian, I promise you, in some parts of America, it's happening even now. Be ready to be persecuted and thrown into prison if you profess. That's why Jesus, one of the statements Jesus said, those that endure to the end. Can you handle what's coming behind your profession? That's why you got to be rooted. That's why you got to be grounded in the kingdom. Not grounded and rooted in church. Church won't keep you when persecution come. But your convictions, my God, like Darius, I mean like Daniel had, will keep you, my God, when people are trying to uproot you. Notice I said people trying to uproot you. Situations trying to uproot you. Circumstances trying to uproot you. But when you plant it in the kingdom, oh my God, you can't be uprooted. <laughs> where you going to go? When you done tasted the goodness of the Lord. When you done seen God move, where you going to go? What you going to go back to? That's what God was trying to tell them in the book of uh, uh, Exodus. Why, why you keep wanting to go back to Egypt? Egypt, my God, bondage, slavery, captivity, bring it up to our time. What's, what's in the world? The world ain't got nothing to offer me but pain. I got scars and bullet shots and a lot of bad memories, my brother, because of the world. Because uh, I wanted to do it my way. Uh, the world ain't got nothing to offer me, pastor. <laughs> ain't nothing back there. I don't care about no 24-inch ring. I don't care about your gold teeth. I don't care about what club is the best. I don't care about how much good alcohol you drink. That don't mean nothing to me. Because it's sooner or later, my God, when a python bites you, he don't kill you. He bites you. Then he wrap around you and start paralyzing you. And then he begin to suffocate you. Many of us is being suffocated. <laughs> oh, my God, because we've been bit by a python. My God, and now he's getting stronger and stronger. Be careful with, uh, about attachments, unhealthy attachments. Uh, everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial. Uh, well, some of y'all don't understand that. I, I mean, I could do what I want to do, but it is beneficial that I do what I want to do. Uh, I'm grown, my God. Yeah, I'm grown, my God. But, uh, yeah, but you use wisdom with your growth. <laughs> Just because you can don't mean you should. <laughs> but you're going to be persecuted for righteousness and thrown into prison. And even kill, Jesus said. You be hated all over the world because you are my followers. I'm reminded of the disciples when they showed up in town, Minister Janice. They said, here come these troublemakers. <laughs> I want to be known as a, tr- I'm already known as one. <laughs> I'm a troublemaker. That's why I don't get phone calls to come preach no workers. They know I'm coming in to tear up something. Not me, but Christ inside of me. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So you want to be known as a troublemaker. I'm a troublemaker, Tasha. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on, somebody. My God, when the disciples would come into town, they would get terrified. Pastor Tetra, here come these troublemakers. How do people see you when you come? Now, I don't want people to see you and be like, ah, here come that Christian. Now, that, we ain't put, we supposed to have a f- sweet fragrance. We should have a, give off a sweet aroma. I'm not talking about being arrogant. I'm not talking about being boastful. My God, because going off of Christ is not about how loud you preach, how many tongues you preach. Going off of Christ is about what? Lifestyle. I train these over here. It ain't about what you say. It's not about how loud you preach. It's not what you live in. That lion is about what you live in. Yeah, that's what it's about. 
So when, when somebody asks you about your logo, say, that's about lifestyle. That ain't got nothing to do with church. That's why it takes a real confident person, my God, to wear the, 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 the pearl that we have because somebody's going to call you to the rug. When you got on just beginning the shirt, they're going to say, okay, tell me what that means. If you got on just the beginning, then why you ain't acting like you had a new beginning? If you're talking about you going off of Christ, the tribe of Judah, the lion, okay, well, you a show don't act like Christ because he come. I'm just trying to help the church. Oh, I'm not shimming that. I'm sorry. God sent or God used. Look at your neighbor. You should live and not die. Laser focus. Resurrection power. Second mm. Timothy 3.12 says, says everyone who wants to live godly in life will suffer persecution. Pastor, why are you ta- Because I'm trying to prepare you for what's coming. There is persecution associated with a true belief and a true stand and true allegiance. We don't want to go through nothing. That's not the Constitution. The word of God warns you and I what's coming. And it's my job as a pastor to make sure that I constantly remind, as Peter, I mean, Paul told Timothy, I always remind the people. I got to constantly remind you and I what's coming. Persecution is coming to a real conviction. If you're trying to fit in and you don't want to be disliked or talked about or lied on, you know, you know ain't nothing going to happen to you. But there's always a small remnant in a corporate of believers, my God, is going through hell because of their belief in Christ. Everybody probably won't experience the same level of persecution that you, but it always tell if you stand. Stand. And my last one, Philippians 1.29 says, for you have been given not only the privilege of trusting Christ. Everybody look at me. Because y'all know I like to make the words in its simplicity. We are privileged to be able to trust Christ. Don't you know how much it's an honor to have a mind at this day and time to even want to pray, to even want to strive to live right? That's an honor that you even trust God. That's a privilege, man, that you and I, that God loves you and I enough at this day and time to leave us the Constitution, to give us biblical instructions. It's a privilege to trust God. Quit taking your relationship with God for granted. When you open up your Bible, you got to say this is an honor. That you get to get the very words of the king. This is God in word form. You don't believe me? Read the book of John, the gospel. In the beginning was the word in the beginning. Before there was a who, what, when, and where, it was the word. Before there was a who, what, when, and where, it was the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The word became flesh. It's only one person I know that stepped down through 40 Two generations walked among men, and people comprehended it not because they loved darkness. It's only one person that I know, Tasha, that came from heaven, and that was a man called Jesus. The word became flesh. Uh, God decided to wrap himself in a body. God, the spirit, he created a body called Jesus, the son. And then the Spirit of God walked amongst the people when he left and sat back at the right hand of the Father. He said, I'm not going to leave you com- uh, 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 confidence. So that's, where you, that's another way where you get the Trinity. When Jesus was baptized, tempted, my God, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, you had God there. Uh, you had the Son and Jesus. And then the Spirit said, this is my Son who I'm well pleased with. There go the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost right there. Uh, so many scriptures, my God, that, that verify. Many people don't understand the Trinity, my God. Oh, but when he was tempted, he was, yeah, John the Baptist baptized him. My God, God said, uh, this is my son. Oh, my God. Uh, the Spirit of God said, this is my son. Uh, the Trinity was manifested right there. Uh, why come God can't create a body? He allowed you women to be able to have a body, human body form in you. What makes you think God can't create his own body? The Bible says he looked. The Bible says he looked from heaven. Uh, he looked for one, but he couldn't find nobody worthy enough to die for the sins of the world. So he said, I only got one solution. I got to wrap myself in flesh. 
and I got to leave the comfort. Oh, my God. I'm sitting high looking low, and I got to come down. <laughs> I got to come see about my people. In the book of Exodus, he said, I've seen their misery. I've heard their cries, and I'm raising up a deliverer to come down. Even though he raised up Moses, but God said, okay, my God, the law didn't work, so now I got to come down, and I got to move this law, and I got to cross it over to grace, baby. And so grace came up out of heaven and walked on the earth. My God, who am I talking to in the church? That's why it is a privilege and an honor when you open up the Constitution, you're getting to read grace. <laughs> oh my God, it's a privilege to be able to trust God. You know how many people are leaving Christianity by the millions and the thousands? If you still got a mind to serve God, you ought to be giving God some glory. Mm. It's a privilege and an honor, but then Paul says, uh, but also it's a privilege to even suffer. It's a privilege to even suffer. And if you know anything about Apostle Paul, <laughs> oh, he had to pay the price. Let me help you with this as I move to point two, and I ain't going to mess with three and four. Watch this. Here is Apostle Paul. Let me teach you something, because the Bible says that which you sow, you shall reap. Okay, now here is Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. He had already obtained permission, Minister Oliver, permission from those that's higher up. He got letters with permission to go and crucify and kill, beat, whatever word you want to put on it, Christians. He had permission to come into a church, this will be called a synagogue in the scripture, and he had dragged people out and beat them and watched them, Stephen and them be stoned, gave permission. Here is Apostle Paul, who was a Hitler. Uh, he tormented the body of Christ. I want you to understand about this man that we're talking about that wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament. He was a killer. I'm, a, I'm emphasizing uh, strong words, my God. He was a killer. He was a Hitler. Oh, my God, he didn't cut nothing about you and I. Or oh, he would cut your head off. He would kill your kids. I'm, I'm serious, y'all. Read the Bible. I'm not playing. Read the word of God, and you understand what the Spirit of God is saying to me. My God, this man will kill you and cut your head off and then dance and shout, my God, and think, watch this word, and think that he was doing God a favor. Amen. But he was on his way to torture the body of Christ. And God said, you know what? And God showed me this personally. It ain't no church. It ain't no pastor, no preacher, present or in the past that Paul would have sat in a synagogue like this and able to preach and he'd have walked down here and said, I want to give my life to Christ. I don't think there's nobody that ever lived and preached the gospel, Christian, that had that much authority and power to make Paul get up out of his seat, Apostle Paul, get up out of his seat and walk down here and say, I want to give my life to Christ. So God said, you know what? The only way he's going to come to know, he got to have, he got to have, as Mr. Sidney would say, a head-on collision with God. See, some of y'all not going to believe until you get a head-on collision. Uh, see, some of y'all, God, God ain't going to make a believe out of you, my God, until you fool around and have a head-on collision. See, because we so hard-headed, we think we got time, and we think we got this thing figured out, my God. Oh, my God, we think that we got time, and we think we got this thing figured out. That's why the Bible says, my God, oh, my God, don't lean to your own understanding. Oh, my God, but God knew. Oh, my God, that's what I'm saying. You got purpose and destiny in you, my God. Oh, my God, but God knew. That the only way this man was going to come to the saving knowledge of the power of God, that God had to meet him head on. Please, all of you men and all of you women, because I know some women are just as prideful and stubborn as me. Is he going to take this? I promise you, this is not a painful place where you got to have a, have, a, have a head on collision for God to mature you. And grow you. But this man had to have a head on collision in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. My God. And then Paul, who was blinded for three days, who did not honor nothing and didn't show nothing, did not honor our God. But he respected Lord, the Lord. He said, he said, uh, he, oh, Lord. I don't want to read it wrong, so I'm going to tell you exactly what it's saying. Oh, the Spirit of God is speaking. Mm. Uh, Paul had that head on collision he went from Saul to Paul Saul, Saul why are you persecuting me uh, who are you Lord when they said Lord in the Old Testament that's another allegiance that's another level of loyalty the same will be was on the streets Brandon to the wrong thing I'm talking about Paul said who are you 
He called him Lord. He had Jesus. He hadn't physically seen God in the flesh, Jesus, but he knew he had met somebody. Y'all listen to me, church. Way more powerful than him. Somebody that would knock him off and make him be blind for three days. Paul had a revelation right there. But what am I trying to say? It took a head-on collision with a true and living God. And for some of y'all, you haven't had your collision. That's why somebody like me is strange because I didn't had that head on collision. Uh, see, I didn't had it, my God. I'm sorry. I didn't had it, and I had it many times, my God. And that's why it's strange, and that's why you would tell yourself it don't take all that because you ain't had no collision. You had a, you had an experience with church. I said you had an experience with church, but you ain't had an experience with God. Oh, when you meet God, everything about you got to shift, baby. When you have, mm, when you meet God, my God, He will break you, then make you. And so, therefore, it does take all that. See, some of us, my God, ain't had that real experience. We, we've been in church a long time. You can out preach me. You know more scripture than me. But you still never had an encounter with God. You had an encounter with tradition. You had an encounter with your grandma's God. You had an encounter with your mama's God. You had an encounter with your daddy's God. But you never had an encounter with the true and living God. Because if it did, your convictions would be different. If it did, your lifestyle would be different. Your hunger would be different. Your, your focus would be different. Oh, my God. Because when God, my God, when God. God met Apostle Paul on his way to Damascus and had their head on collision. Paul said, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Instantly, his allegiance, well, I'm going with it, instant, his allegiance shifted, transferring the kingdom. He went from being legalistic and loyal to that what he knew to instant being loyal to the king. When he saved me, ah, I'm going to leave it alone. Instant loyalty, transfer. From gain life to Christ's life. Come on, somebody. Well, instantly, never went back. Instantly. Head on collision. That is, that's a keeper. And been through all type of affliction and never had a mindset to go back. Some of you need to say, God, you know what? You got to take a bold statement of faith and say, God, I, I need a head on collision. Can I tell you why you need it? Because you got so much purpose. You got so much destiny in you. And who in my life got to suffer if I never obtain my purpose? If I never discover that I have a purpose and that I'm supposed to live different? Oh, my God. But Paul, when he never got saved in nobody's church in the world, God had to meet Paul. And when Paul gave his life to Christ, the man of God wrote over half of the New Testament. What am I trying to make y'all understand? Here is somebody, because I got a teenager, they looking. Here is somebody that was a, he was a stone. I mean, I'm sorry, y'all, but I got to say this. I, I want to make it simplistic to the world's way. He was, and see, some of y'all don't understand this, but it's Bible. I'm just using different verbiage. Paul was a gangster. He was a gangster. Amen. I, I love, amen, daughter. It's real talk. He was a gangster. But here was a gangster that ended up getting transformed and ended up writing over half of the New Testament. Why am I saying this? Because why are you counting yourself out? Why are you letting your past dictate your transformation? Why are you letting the things people said, my God, control your purpose, my God, interfere with your destiny, my God? If God could take someone, my God, that was a killer, my God, and transform him, and he affect the kingdom, my God, in the New Testament, he's the greatest preacher next to Christ in the New Testament, my God. And if God can use this man that tortured, tortured, he tortured, he tortured God's people, my God, and God used him, my God, to turn the world through his writings upside down. When Paul was in prison, Pastor Dean, oh, my God, he asked for three things. Give me a pen, a paper, and a blanket so I can write the gospel. Oh, they missed that. Oh, he didn't ask for no TV or fan or radio, Christian. He didn't ask for you to get him no oatmeal pies. He didn't ask for no Roman noodles. Oh, he didn't ask for no Debbie sticks. Y'all know about that dirty dad, but me and you do. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. The man of God said, give me a pen. Oh, look at the conviction. Y'all stay with me. Don't miss what God is trying to say. Oh, my God, look at the conviction and the laser focus, y'all, that the man of God had in the midst of hell. He was in prison. My God, everybody abandoned him. Everybody forsaked him. Everybody turned their back on him. My 
God, because they was terrified of him, my God. And he said, I don't need nothing, my God. Just bring me a pen so I can write, give me some paper, and give me a blanket so I can stay warm while I'm in this dungeon going hard for Christ. And he never shifted. He stayed down for Christ in the midst of hell and persecution, my God. All you got to do is read the word of God. Paul went through hell. Now watch this. I ain't lost my thought. Remember I said, you reap what you sow? Now here's a man that had a head on collision with God, wrote a lot of the New Testament that you read. And if you read the New Testament like you should be, you see Paul went through a whole lot of persecution. So just because you're saved, just because you somewhat pay your time, just because you forgive, just because you don't win the evil for evil, just because you shun the appearance of temptation and evil, because you do all those religious things, you still got to reap what you sow. This man caused harm, great harm, to the body of Christ. He put people in prison. Guess we spent over half of his life at church in prison. So the very thing that he caused God's people, he had to experience himself. The very pain, y'all stay with me, church. That's why you got to be careful and think about the things that you say and the things that you do because there's consequences. Quit letting people tell you because you up under grace that there ain't going to be no consequence. The devil is a lie. That's killing the church. Or that grace heavy message is killing the church and it's giving people a license to live in sin and they don't know, my God, they set themselves up for a major collision with pain and suffering. You can't treat God's people and you can't live any kind of way and think ain't nothing going to happen to you behind your choices because God going to forgive me. The devil is a lie. He going to forgive you but you got to pay the piper, baby. I'm proud. I'm sorry. So here's Paul. Here's Paul, Toya. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I thank God my baby's just laser focused up there. He's doing a lot of good for God. But he had to pay the piper. Just as much good as he's done on this other side, because he did all that when he was Saul. See, God will change your name. See, names, my God, meant something in the Old Testament. When you have a head on collision, oh my God, Pastor Champ, I'm flowing. When you have a head on collision with God, God will change in terms of the kingdom of heaven. God will change your nature. The things you used to enjoy doing, you don't really want to do no more. Uh, the phone rang, you'd be like, ah, son, the very things. Shira, when they pull up over there and they said, oh, it's legal now, you'd be like, I'm cool now. Uh, I can't do nothing. Uh, the phone rang and some pop up you're, and you're like oh I'm delivered from that uh, I know she but I'm cool come on so who am I talking to in the church my God well, God will change your nature God will change your nature oh my God God will shift you baby mm-hmm. Jesus oh when the temptation come God will shift you Apostle Paul nature changed his nature changed he had to reap what he sowed so what that means is you and I got to pull back, baby. Go back and Google on YouTube the message I preached last year or whatever called adjusting a doubt. The body of Christ, and I'm bringing it in. I'm not going to mess with nothing else. You got to be prepared to adjust and adapt in this hour. Going home for Christ, God has allowed us for five and a half years to get prepared. Listen to me. If you've been reading your one-year Bible like we do over here, when God told them in the book of Deuteronomy, getting the people ready, the Israelites, to not only occupy, watch this, what God showed me. James, look what he showed me. He said, he said you're not just going to occupy, but you got to take occupants to possess. Say that again. You're not just going to occupy, Tina, 205, now you got to possess. Joshua was possessors of the land. See, many of us is occupying space. But are you possessing? When the kingdom show up, you possess. Meaning that you affect the environment instead of the environment affecting you. So you got to get to the point where you operate in that much authority. No matter what God drop you at, no matter what God place you at, I don't care how chaotic it is, I don't care how much confusion it is, my God. When you show up, here come order. When you show up, here come the power. When you show up, here come deliverance. When you show up, here come healing, my God. Because the Bible says, New Testament, that the kingdom of heaven lives within. You got the power, my God, to affect the environment, that environment affecting you. That's why you got to think like a king and a queen instead of, mm, instead of something else, baby. So quit complaining about your environment. 
and tell God to give you the power to change the environment. Because guess what? God put you in that environment. Cause, oh my God, because God needs a light in that environment. He needs somebody. And so the very environment, my God, that you're complaining about is the very environment God said, I place you there so you can make a difference. So that you can show God's glory. Don't you know that all God wants is his glory out of you? Don't you know you are seed? Don't you know? My God, if a seed does not produce, my, if an apple seed does never become an apple tree, it died without producing glory. If a seed never died, and produce that what it was created to produce. You have robbed the world of the benefits. In a seed, if it's an apple seed, I should be able to benefit of eating some healthy apples from that one seed. If that seed never produced an apple tree, then it just robbed me an opportunity to benefit from its glory. Uh-oh, watch this, I'm heavy. So if you never become, find your purpose, so God can move you to your destiny, if you never become, my God, my God, my God, and you never expose that hidden potential, ooh, that hidden glory that lives on the inside of you, my God, and you return back to God full of glory, you just robbed the world, and you did God no justice down on earth. Because, my God, as the late Dr. Malro said, we are supposed to return back to God empty. That means you have given out everything, every purpose and everything that God created you to do, uh, you gave it to the world. You sold it into the world. That's why it's so in, ooh, important for you and I to understand why you and I was cre created. So if you don't know uh, your purpose, you say, God, show me. Oh, my God, show me my purpose so I don't return back to you, fool. I want to be able to know my purpose is, God, so I can serve. When God show you your purpose, it's not for you to say, oh, I know my purpose. It's not for you to run up here and say, Pastor, let me tell people what my purpose is. Now, when God reveal your purpose, it's for you to go sow your purpose into the world. It's for you to go help advance God's kingdom, my God. Oh, my God, many people are sitting down on their purpose. Some of us know what we created to do. Some of us know what we called to do. But you come to church and you don't share your glory with nobody. You're sitting up here full. And if you die, you're going to return back to God full instead of return back to God empty. So you need to say, God, I want to serve my glory. And you got a pastor that wants you to become everything that God called you to be. I'm always commanding y'all to come forth. I'm always commanding y'all to find out what God created you to do so you can serve the body, so you can serve the world. The world needs your glory. People around you are hurting and dying out here at church. That's why we are called to build people and change lives. But when you find out what your glory is, serve it to the world. Let God use you. Come on, somebody give God a hand in this church, my God. Somebody say, God, show me my purpose. <laughs> Ask yourself, is it God sent? Lord took me. He took me on a, a trail. Look at your neighbor. Come on, look at your neighbor. Is it God sent? Ask him. Look to the other side and say, is it God sent? Now, let me ask you a question. I didn't get to really, <laughs> Lord, I didn't really get to tell you and show you the difference. So I'm going to paraphrase in the last five minutes I got. What I love about the story of Joseph is that he didn't cause any of this to happen on his own. It was all God sent. So because God sent it, listen to me, church, God was able to use it. This is what hurts the body of Christ. We always try to spiritualize, Pastor James. I justify Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good to those that love God and are called. That is so true. But don't, as I teach y'all, take that out of context. Yes, God can take what we have done wrong like he did with Apostle Paul. What Paul, Paul did this wrong. Joseph did it right. Let me make sure y'all understand that. And God took, my God, because God, oh my God, in that story in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, this is what really baffled me years ago. The Bible says everything Minister Janice that Paul was doing, the Bible says, Ananias, go lay hands on him. Ananias said, no, 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 no. Right there. Come on. 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 Come on
I'm going to show you how cold he was. God said, no, nah, I ain't going to be able to do it. God said, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I said, God, I, I, I'm just, see, that's, that's old. That's eight, 1980s, and they don't know about that. I'm just ain't going to be able to do it. Uh, y'all know, they, they don't know about their brother, but friend, they don't, I ain't going to be able to do it. I said, uh, why? Because Ananias knew that this man was a killer. But watch this now. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. And then I said, I can't do it, Patrice. Mm -hmm. I, God, I can't. I'm not the one. I promise you I'm not the one. I love you. I got loyalty to you. I'm down. I'm ten toes in it. I promise you I'll do anything but this. <laughs> God told Ananias, go. Lay hands on him. Watch this. He's a chosen instrument. Even though God allowed that dispensation, that providence at the time, the providence of God, allowed Saul, who became Paul. God knew what Saul was doing when he was Saul. But God knew that he had a date and he had a time. Every last one of you got a date and every last one of you got a time. One of the things you cannot do, I'm talking all over the church. I don't care if you have been going to church. You got a day and a time. Don't miss it. Because if Paul wouldn't have submitted, God would have had to kill him. Because God was not going to continue to allow Saul to persecute his people. So he had to make a decision right then. Either I'm going to submit or I'm going to die. Boy, some of y'all better. See. Ooh, shout out, she. Either I'm going to submit or I'm going to die. He knew that. The Bible says that the man of God was so skilled and learned. He was a theologian. See what I'm trying to say? He could debate all day long. Uh, you couldn't trick him up with no words. And you couldn't use all these big words that I don't know and all that. Paul, that, uh, come on, somebody. He, he, he knew that. But he knew enough to know if I don't submit, my time has come. Knock, knock. My time is here. Uh, knock, knock. My time is here. For some of y'all, my God, this is your time. This is your time. This is your time. I'm reminded of all the murders in the last couple of weeks. Me and baby Cody was talking about this, all the murders, dirty dies. And, uh, my man, Bone, didn't think it was going to be his last day. That guy that went to Arby's, I'm sorry if that's anybody's family, didn't think. See, didn't think nobody's going to come up from behind the counter and track him down. See, you better quit playing with the enemy, baby. You better quit playing, my God, with your, my God, with your soul, man. Ooh, he didn't think that. He didn't think that. Paul knew either I better submit or God going to kill him. He wasn't going to allow him to continue to torture the body of Christ. I believe, and the Bible says that the cupbearer and the baker went to prison and so forth. They had dreams. And Joseph interpreted the dreams and he instantly, my God, went back to the throne. He was put in prison in a pit behind his dreams, but the same dream, interpretation of dreams, got him out of prison. So that same gift that you're sitting on is the same gift that's going to promote. The same gift, purpose, that you're sitting on, you're saying, God, when is me? When, is, when, when I'm next? God's saying, when you expose your glory? Don't you know that that what, ooh, my God. Don't you know that that what God has called you to do? That there's so many people, there's so many resources, there's so much finances, there's so much healing, ah, there's so much deliverance. Y'all listen to me, Oliver. There's so much connected to you exposing and finding and discovering your gift, your purpose. Don't you know that God has people assigned to your life? When you begin to expose the people to who you are, God said, okay, now it's time for me to start sinning and connecting the dots. Don't you know that they offended? The, the, the cupbearer and, and, and the baker, they, they offended the king. And the king put them specifically in the prison with Joseph. 
Don't you know, my God, that Joseph, my God, because he was obedient. I'm reminded, I'm paraphrased, I'm reminded if Joseph would have got bitter, if Joseph would have been angry, if Joseph would have said, you know what, I'm in prison, my God, behind something I didn't do. Y'all listen to me, y'all. Please, please, please. Come on now, listen to me. We only got one more hour, I mean, one more time left in here. My God, listen to me. Don't you know that if Joseph, my God, would have got bitter, if he'd have said, my God, Brandy, I'm mad because my brothers did be like this, my, my family has forsaken me, my God. I'm in prison behind this woman that I ain't never did nothing. Too. I'm standing, I'm going hard for Christ and now I'm being persecuted. Why am I going through all this stuff? But Joseph never took that mindset. And so when God sent, watch this y'all, he's in prison, but God sent the answer to prison. God sent the deliverer to prison. Oh, man, God sent the deliverance that it was going to happen in prison. Oh, my God, your prison may not be physical, my God, but God's trying to send the answer, my God, to your crisis, the answer to your prison, the answer to your situation, my God. It's going to come to you in the fire, in the prison, not when you get out. Why you in? My God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I'm trying to bring it. He sent the answer to prison. Two people had a dream. They offended the king, so I'm throwing them in prison. And if Joseph would have been in prison, angry, y'all listen to me. And the angry and bitter, y'all. I'm trying, Lawanya. If he'd have been angry and bitter because of life circumstances and situations like many of you are right now. You're angry. You're bitter. You're angry. And you're bitter. And you have told yourself, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm grown. And they, God, our pastor can't make me do nothing. My mama can't make me do nothing. My, uh, my kids can't even make me do nothing. You're bitter. You're angry. You're offended. Joseph never took on that. And so when God sent the answer to him in prison, this is where I'm going with this, Minister Christian. He sent the answer by way. See, God had allowed the two to offend the king, and the king put them in prison with Joseph. And because the Bible says that while Joseph was in prison, the Lord was with Joseph, and God gave Joseph favor with the warden. So now Joseph was in charge in the kingdom, and now he's in charge, my God, in the prison. My God, so God said, I'm going to send the, the, the Pharaoh, I mean, the king sent them to Joseph and put them right there with Joseph, yeah, yeah, yeah. who is an interpreter of dreams. Yeah. But if Joseph would have been in prison, bitter, like I've been saying, and angry, and he told God, watch me, y'all. And he told God in his mind, I ain't doing nothing. Listen to me. I'm angry. I'm being persecuted for righteousness sake. I ain't done nothing but been good to you, God. Why are you allowing this to happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? He didn't never take on a callous heart. He never became bitter. He never developed an unforgiving spirit because of life crisis and life circumstances. Even when it was his own flesh and blood that caused all the hell in his life. So what is the spirit of God trying to say to some of y'all? All of us. Thank you. Me too. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have God sent you the answer? While you in your crisis? While you're in your form of prison, whether it be your mind, whether it be your emotions, oh my God, have God sent you the answer? And because you are so bitter, because you're talking about, why did he do that? Why did pastor say this? Why did the first lady do this? Why did Christian do that? Why did Janice do that? Why did my brothers do that? Why was I born to you? Why come that happen to me? See, we got all that stuff. And you're praying, saying, God, when? God said, I sent you the answer, but you're too bitter to receive it. I've already delivered you, but you can't see it. Uh, that's why I tell y'all, sin uh, desensitize you. Oh, my God, God sent the answer. Oh, my God, to Joseph, my God, because he said, when, when, you, when you get back to your kingdom, after you interpret the dream, he said, don't forget about me. Two years passed, and then the man of God was reminded that it was an old Hebrew boy. <laughs> Joseph didn't have to interpret their two dreams. Read the story. But he didn't let flesh interfere with his assignment. He stayed healthy. He stayed laser focused. He stayed taqwa. He stayed in the river and in the rhythm. Though Joseph felt alone, he was never abandoned. He was, though he felt abandoned, he was never alone. Many of you right now feel abandoned. People have abandoned you. 
People has forsaked you. People has hurt you. But you got to know that the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. So when the Lord is with you, that means the whole embodiment of the kingdom is with you. So you ain't alone. You may feel in your flesh. That's why the Bible said you got to walk by faith. Flesh say I'm abandoned. They left me. They lied on me, William. They talked about me. They misunderstood me. I go through it all the time. It's okay, man of God. Uh, I may feel alone, but I'm never. Uh, I'm abandoned, but I'm never alone. God is telling you, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you, but in order for you, the answer to come to you, because guess what? As I stated, Sandra, the answer going to come in the midst of the fire. Uh, the Bible says that God spoke in the fire. God spoke to them through the fire. Read the Bible, Old Testament. He didn't wait till they get out. God was in the fire and God spoke in the fire. Well, you could be in a storm, in a trial, and that's when God speaks. Don't you know that God is the God of the valley just like yes. he is the mountains? Yes. Oh, yeah. See, we look for God up high, but God really operates down here as well. He does his greatest work, my God, in the valley. See what I'm trying to say? But see, some of you, my God, are staying in prison longer than what you're supposed to because you're bitter. You won't let it go. You have the wrong attitude. Joseph never let his life circumstances, what I'm trying to say, and I'm through, interfere with his assignment. Yeah. I could have been in quit. I could have been in with quit. Some of my pain and suffering has been self-inflicted, but more of it has been, my God, envy and jealousy. But because of my assignment, I don't get to quit. My assignment compels me to keep going. Many times me and Janice has talked and almost cried together because we wanted to both close down both businesses. But the assignment is too great. Who in my life got to suffer because I let outside pressure cause me to quit and abandon my calling and then I got to deal with the consequences of giving up on my calling. I had a pastor friend, I was telling Pastor Champ, I had a pastor friend to tell me, I met Champ, I did, my God, he closed down his ministry because his wife didn't want to be a first lady. And to this day, they are no longer together and he regrets that he ever closed his ministry down. And some of y'all don't see First Lady. First Lady and I are working it out. I'm just real like that. We ain't finna get no divorce. Ain't none of that going on. She'll be in her spot. She'll be in her spot. She ain't never left her spot. I promise you. You can't sit there. Don't be trying to. I promise you. I'm cool. I shun the very appearance of temptation. I'm straight, baby. <laughs> straight up. I'm straight. Oh my God, thank y'all for that. Thank y'all for that. Thank y'all for that. Amen. 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 All I'm trying to say is that if Joseph would have let life stay on top of him, he would have missed his deliverance. Some of you if not all of us, in some form or way, God has sent a word and has sent the answer for your deliverance. But anger, bitterness, pain, frustration, you feel forgotten, you feel abandoned, and you have set out on God. Many of you know what your purpose is. Many of you know why God created you, but you didn't have some detours. And you didn't understand if it was God sent, it could be God used. And you didn't walked away. It's time to get your heart back right. Because God is trying to speak to you in the midst of the fire. God is not, listen to me y'all, look at me y'all. Please man, don't miss. God is not going to bring you up out of your prison until you submit to what he's trying to do in your life. So don't stay too long. Don't you know, it was two years that Joseph had to stay in prison, Sharon, after he interpreted the dreams. Listen to me y'all. Two years, bring it down just a little bit, daughter. You right there. Look at me, look at me. It was two years after he interpreted the dreams of those. One was beheaded and one went back to his rightful position. Two years passed. And Joseph told him when he delivered him, when he told the dream, he said, when, you, when God restore you, don't forget about me. Two years passed. Joseph could have got bitter again, pastor. This man, I didn't help this man, this man, and they forgot about me. Two years passed. And then he finally remembered he finally remembered. I'm reminded of this Hebrew boy. Sin for him. The king asked. The Bible says Joseph shaved, changed clothes, and went before the king. And the rest of it is history. 13 years of suffering, he lived in 80 years of blessings. God sent and God used it. 
God is trying to prepare you in the midst of the fire. God has sent the answer. God has sent the answer. God has raised up people around you to show you that he's real. Listen to me, church. God has raised up people around you that you have seen God do some things in their life. And you know that person is much, much different than when you first met them. God is speaking you through, speaking to you and I through people. But we're missing it because we're so bitter. We're too familiar with people. They couldn't even believe that Jesus was the way because that's Mary's baby. Uh, uh, that's Joseph's brother or son, whatever that was. My God, they couldn't accept, my God, oh my God, God's way. Many of you are staying stuck in prison because, my God, you got some form of belief system that's wrong. You waiting for God to get you out. God said, nope, until I mold you and you staying in. Until you submit like Paul did, you staying in. Are you staying in your prison longer than what you're supposed to? Are you going to not answer the call this afternoon and you're going to fool around and die? Come on. I'm literally talking about real death. I'm not talking about spiritual. I'm talking about death. Is that going to be you? Are you going to stay stuck? Are you going to continue to resent? Are you going to continue to stay bitter? It's time to let it go. So I'm going to ask what we do here is that you come. As I told my son, and I'm going to share this with the church. God spoke to me at the campus when I had my meeting with him. I want every last one of you and I, listen to me, please. If you're a guest, you're welcome to leave. But I want to talk to going off of Christ. And if you are thinking about joining this ministry when we transition, I'm talking to you. Any other ORU students, my God, that's thinking about being a part of what Christian and Amber's doing, I'm talking to you too. This is pastoral talk right now. Listen to me. Every last one of you that's been with me in this church and my wife at this church for any length of time, I want you to bring everything. God gave it to me over there at 205 sitting in my study. Everything that has happened to you at this piece of real estate, I don't care what it is, I want you to bring it and put it on the altar. Every pain, I don't care what has happened, this is the spirit of the living God. Come submit it all. I'm talking to kids, adults. I don't want nobody working the doors. I want every porter, every greeter. I, mean, I want you to leave everything on the altar. And if you can kneel down, get on your face, quit worrying about the time, because this is serious. Either you're going to change or you're going to die. Leave it on the altar. Everybody surrender and submit. If you get on your knees as the body of Christ, get on your knees because I'm going to get there too. Bring everything, every pain, every disagreement, everybody that's hurt you, everybody that's lied on you, everybody that's talked to you. And it ain't just in the church. What about your mamas and daddies and grandmas and school teachers? Bring them people and lay them on the altar. Man of God, do you got something to bring? Bring it to the altar. My God, don't sit there. Bring it to the altar. Bring it. We're trying to leave it. We're killing it today. We're sacrificing all of our, our Ismaels. We're sacrificing them today. We're leaving it. We're not taking none of this mess over 205. Forgive me if I've offended any one of you. I repent before you right now. Let's start over. Who in my life got to suffer? Oh my God, if you can't judge nobody, you can't throw no stones at nobody. All of us got something in our life that we need somebody to forgive us. Show mercy to somebody. Show mercy to your pastor. Show mercy to your sister. Some of y'all offended at your P12 leaders. Some of you offended at your former P12 leaders. Repent. Repent, says the Lord. Come on and lay down, kids. Get something over and lay down. Come on, come on. Get them over. Pastor tells you, get the kids down. Get them down, my God. Lay it down. Come on, Dwayne. Let's get down. Let's get down. Let's get down, Dominique. We all on our face. We all on our face. Oh, my God, my God. Matter of fact, Dwayne, stay back and watch the person. Stay back and watch the persons. Oh, my God. Yeah, stay back. There you go. Watch around. Come on, baby. It's time to lay it down. Oh, my God. Shift, shift, shift. Watch to the back. There you go. I don't want nobody yell. Cause we, yeah, yeah. Watch, watch. this turn that way. It about shit. Get his mic ready for me, son. Leave it here. Leave it here. Leave it here. Leave it here. Don't stay in the fire too long. Don't stay in prison. The answer has come to you in the pain. God has said, my God, I'm speaking. I've already delivered you. But you got bitterness and anger and frustration. You're angry at your mama. You're angry at your pastor. You're angry at your daughter. You're angry at your son. You're angry at your ex-husband, ex-wife. I, 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 you can't hear my voice. Oh, surrender. Surrender. Hey, Jesus. Surrender. Oh, 
Let it go. All the pain from your mama. All the pain from your daddy. Let it go. Your uncle that molested you. Your auntie that molested you. Let it go. Help me to forgive. Help my unbelief. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, God. Oh, come on, Christian. Come on, Christian. Oh, my God. Oh, shakara na basha.
your people and for these your vessels. We thank you for these lives. We thank you for a fresh surrender, for a fresh surrender that we lay down the things that weigh us down and we lay down the things that keep us from you. We lay down the sin and the weight today, Father, and we say you have your preeminence again, Father. You have your preeminence, Father, again. We renew our lives to you, and we submit ourselves to holiness. We submit ourselves to righteousness. We submit ourselves to righteousness. For you have a plan for our lives, and we say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord. Give us strength, Father, strength and courage to suffer persecution. Strength and, strength and courage to turn away from loved ones. Strength and courage to turn away from support systems. Strength and courage to turn away from strongholds. Strength and courage to turn away from oppression. Strength and courage to step away from addiction. Strength and courage, Father. That we would understand that when we lose our lives, we gain you. When we lose our lives, we gain security. We gain fortitude, we gain strength. That there is a friend like no other friend. That there is a love like no other love. There is a source that trumps every resource. And so Father, we say yes to you. We say yes to your plan for our lives. We submit ourselves to study. We submit ourselves to your word, Father that you would learn us and master us in your word, that we would, be become, we would become perfected in your sight, that we would submit ourselves to the body, that we would submit ourselves to the elders, and that we would submit ourselves to the teachers, that we would be prepared to go into the next season of our lives. For the next season of our lives is the best season of our lives. And we receive that now that the next season of our lives is the best season of our lives. That we haven't seen your best yet. We haven't seen your best for us yet. We haven't seen your best for us yet. The best days are yet to come. The best days are yet to come. We walk in a newness. We walk in your best for us, Father that your plan is the best plan. And so we receive it now with all humility and with all meekness. We understand that we do not drive this ship, but you do. And you and you alone steer the boat, Father. Guide us and lead us and direct us and give all authority a submitted yes to the supreme authority that Jesus and Jesus alone be the guide we lay our agenda down, we lay our careers down, we lay our lives down, we lay our finances down, we lay our families down, we lay our children down, we lay our will and our, we lay our obedience at your feet, Father. Send us and we'll go. Tell us to speak and we will. We step into this new season with a firm obedience a stubborn obedience. Whatever the Lord says, we shall do. And it is so. It is so. Father, we pray all of these things in your son's most holy and precious name. And by his name we receive. Ask and we receive. And it is so. In Jesus' most holy and precious name we pray. And the whole body says, Amen and Amen.